The Louisiana Raging Cajuns get a big 53-3 win here in Cajun Field. Clint Doming here with 103.7 The Game, the only game in town. I'm here with our guy Louis Prejean. Yes. He helps out as well in terms of the coverage. My man, that defense was absolutely outstanding. I know you got a big column coming up about it on 1037thegame.com. Yeah, so I wrote about in my column on 1037thegame.com. Great website, by the way. Oh, it's fantastic. I, everything, everything is there. <laughs> I wrote about the defense, and the defense really stood out to me tonight despite the Cajuns scoring 53 points. It's kind of weird to say that on a night that they scored 53 points that the Cajuns defense is the one that took the spotlight. But when you look at in 2017, they gave up 40 points a game. Just in Napier's first season as a head coach, he gave up 34 points a game. But this season, they're giving up 16.7 points per game. They haven't that's allowed, updated after tonight's game against Troy where they only gave up three. They haven't allowed 30 points since the Mississippi State game. Let's put it that way. This is a team that they played against. It's the Troy Trojans, second in the conference in terms of total offense. This is a totally different team compared to what we saw last year with Neil Brown in his last year where that defense was absolutely outstanding. They wound up holding the Cajuns last year. They bounced back in a big way, holding Chip Lindsey, former Auburn offensive coordinator, and that red-hot offense down and were able to get the job done. It was absolutely outstanding to see what the Louisiana Raging Cajuns did, not just on the defensive side of the football, but we got to give credit to the offense. Levi Lewis, another great performance, over 200 yards through the air. I think he's my player of the game, but it's kind of hard to say like outright because he only had one touchdown. Yeah. But for the most part, overall, a great performance from him. Another really solid outing from the running back core. Again, it was, you saw the three-headed monster do its thing. Three touchdowns, one each from Trey Regis, Elijah Mitchell, and Ray McCallie. Hashtag as expected. Yeah, so here's the thing about the rushing attack from the Cajuns offense. Now, it's a little inflated when you look at the stats. They had 270-plus yards on rushing but Chris Smith had an 80-yard run, which you love to see. Billy Napier said in postgame he looked like an Olympic sprinter. And then you had a Ray McCauley 45-yard run, I believe. Yeah, 45-yard um, run that set up that one-yard touchdown so, early in the second quarter. So there, there's, a, there's a little bit of inflation there, but you could say inflation or you could say they're just great runs, and that's why really quality there's a great runs. rushing attack. So here's the thing with the rushing offense. They were doing it without three starters on that offensive yep. line. They had a lot of continuity last season, but this season – a little banged up on that a offensive lot of line, injuries. I mean, some injuries. That, uh, Dotson, if not, was, uh, the Cole Perdome before the season started. That's what it was. Yeah, and they were so still many, able, so many injuries on the offensive they, line. Hard they, to keep track. They were still able to do it though tonight, yeah. and that was with Chris Smith, Trey Ray. Cr Trey Ray. When you think about Trey Regis, he was even banged up uh, going into this game. He, he was, but, so, you know. but they still got it done, and that's a testament to the running attack. That's a testament to the game plan that Napier has set up for him. It's just absolutely outstanding to see what they've been able to do all season long. But we got to talk about a disappointing part of the game, and it's oh. not—it's not what happened on the field. Okay, it's the attendance. I think like the attendance it continues to be a big issue for the Cajuns. Yes, there's a game going on across the basin that, mind you, it's LSU Arkansas. But at the same time, you would have loved to have a bigger fan base for a team that's eight and two on the year. Eight and two people now nine and now two. nine and two yeah. on the verge of their first ten win season in program history. Probably going to receive a lot more votes come tomorrow morning whenever the. Amway coaches poll and then the AP poll comes out around one. So you're going to wind up seeing the Cajuns possibly be a ranked program yeah. for the first time, at least since like the 50s. I would love to see people show up and I would love to see what people have to say people. about the attendance. Yeah, more people. <laughs> There's no one coming to the games. No, but here's, <laughs> here's the thing about I would love to see what people had to say about tonight's attendance because there were, you know, an LSU game it's frustrating. at six. It's a little frustrating. You look at the stands, not many people showed up. But here's the thing they have. A chance to make history next week. They can win 10 games for the first time in program history yep. in a single season with a win over ULM next week. Here's the thing about the ULM game next week, and this is why people should show up because ULM is an in-state rival. rival. In-state rival. And it's, it's, a, and it's 6 30 p.m. Six, kickoff because it's that's official. And yes, it's going to be on the mother thing called the U and the W University of Miami, but still, you need to come out here and watch this Cajuns team strive for something they've never been able to achieve heading into the Sun Belt title game because they clinched the Sun Belt West, by the way. That's something that we, we buried the lead. They've won the Sun Belt West for the second straight year. Two for two, baby. That's two for the Cajuns. And it's just different from last season. Last season, it almost felt like they kind of barely got to clinching yeah. that West division. But this year, it's been dominant. Yeah, took a, on took a missed field goal at the end of the ULM game. And what's scary about the Cajuns team is this is their most complete game of the season. Most complete, they hadn't right. played a really complete game up until this point, and it's coming at towards the tail end of the season, heading into a potential, you know, it will be against App State. Yeah. But 
heading into ULM, heading into that in-state rival, they're just now clicking into com uh, into a complete team. That's what. It's that's amazing so to see this team do what they've done, and you know, we bring up the fact like we want to see a lot of attendance. It's not, it's not just us. I feel like Billy Napier, all these guys, especially guys like Chauncey Manack, Elijah Mitchell, Trey Regas, all these seniors that, that are part of this program. They deserve to see one more game where this place is relatively packed. I'm not saying we get the 30,000 because I feel like that's a bit of a stretch, obviously, yeah. Saturday after Thanksgiving, but I feel like they should at least get a really solid maybe 20,000 20, fan turnout. That could be absolutely huge for this program because guess what? You know, one of the big things everybody wants to talk about is, hey, this team's doing really good. How long can it last? Because Billy Napier, 9-2 and two on the year, potentially could be 10-2 and two when the regular season's all said and done. There's going to be a lot of coaching vacancies. Who knows where Billy Napier could be at the end of the 2019 season. Of course, that's future talk, though. Yeah, I was about to say, we just have to enjoy the moment right now. They have nine wins. They can get 10, and they still have two games left uh, with the bowl game and with yep. the, the Sun Belt Conference well, title yeah. game. So they still have two games left after the UL win game. So they can really hit a mark that just we Could haven't they? seen in the Cajuns program history. I have a question. Could they get 12-2? and two? I'm, I'm skeptical on that. I'm skeptical That's going to be a poll question on Monday. Okay, so here's why I'm skeptical about the Cajuns going 12-2 and two like Clint just presented because they're on, I believe, a five-game winning streak now. Um, I could be wrong on that. You can All check right, the numbers. So, they're still on a they're still on So a they lost streak. to App State. They beat Arkansas State. You beat Coastal Carolina. No, South Alabama. Texas State, Coastal Carolina, South Alabama. They're, it's a six-game win streak. Okay, so they're on this winning streak. It feels like... You it has happened have before. You have to drop one game somewhere. You cannot, the, you cannot drop this game. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But it Despite almost, my nine and three preseason prediction. Yeah. Hey, Clint, great job on that, by the way. But, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just like, so, I, I want them to lose, but at the same time, I don't because it's an in-state rival. Yeah. So twelve and two, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I'm still skeptical on that. I have a question about the attendance and people. You know, you can comment in. On yeah. This. I mean, we got we got like three people watching right is, now. Is uh, oh, seven? Clint, come on, read the numbers. Seven. Read the numbers. The, um, the numbers are too small. I, like, I don't know what it is. Here, <laughs> I, have a, I, have a, I have a question about yeah. the attendance and with the Cajuns' offense. Are they exciting to watch? When you watch this team, they put a lot of points on They're the board. Exciting. But are they exciting to watch? Do people actually want to come watch this offense? They're exciting as all get out because of the fact that like, you just saw Chris Smith put it up. An 80-yard run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You saw Trey Regis just basically run 45 yards. <clears throat> you see some really cool moments here and there. You saw, a, like, early on in the ball game, the opening drive for Troy, you almost had three plays that were interceptions. This is a team that's going to wind up getting some really awesome stuff done in the not-too-distant future. I can't wait to see what the Cajuns do next Saturday against UL Monroe, but more importantly, what happens in this game two weeks from now, whenever it's in Boone, North Carolina, because that's where it's going to be. Like, I'm sorry, but there, right now there's no way it's not going to be in Boone, North Carolina, or should I say, is it? I mean, rumor is it's beautiful whatever, in Boone, North Carolina. Whatever you want to call it. it rumor in your window. But, you know? uh, right now, the Cajuns just have to focus on their next week's matchup against ULM. Focus in on that. I know yep. that you know it's always the same thing. Uh, we take it week by week, and it's true. They've been taking it week by week. That's why they're on this winning streak. And I'm not looking at Boone right now. I'm not looking at App State. Right now, I'm looking at ULM and how they bounce back from just a dominant performance against Georgia tonight. It's just going to be a great time. And, you know, it's definitely getting a little chilly in here because I'm not wearing a jacket. I don't know why. I've yeah, that's that, a mistake. Buddy. That's a mistake on me. I'm, I'm feeling great. But, you know great. what? We'll deal with that later. We'll deal with that later. Yeah, Have absolutely. a great night, everybody. Make sure you check out 1037thegame.com for Lewis's column. A whole lot of other stuff as well. You need to just check out 1037thegame.com. Put it in your it. bookmarks it. You and doing? check it out. And also, like, like us on Facebook because, hey, we're right here. Like, we're on Facebook. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Because guess what? We need attention. Peace out, everybody. <laughs>